Hi, I'm Steve Costello. I'm the math interventionist for grades kindergarten through grade three at Francis T. Bresnahan Elementary School in Newburyport, Massachusetts. And this video is about the three questions I get most often when I'm talking to parents either at open house or parent-teacher conferences or just uh, when I run to the hardware store or whenever. The three questions I get most often about uh, the math that, that we do at school. Now, some people call it Common Core Math. We use uh, Eureka, uh, which is the same as Engage New York Math. Uh, that's our math curriculum. And the three questions I get most often are, what's wrong with regular addition and subtraction? Why is the math so weird? And can't there be just one way to add and subtract? And these are the most popular questions, and I'm going to try to answer them with some examples from real life. One of them happened to me uh, just about an hour ago. So... Uh, some of you I know uh, don't do math in your head and math is a black box for you if you had trouble with math in school uh, then uh, math isn't just a black box it's it's wrapped in concertina razor wire and set on fire don't panic I'm not going to try to make anyone do any math in this video. What comes next is a sort of number talk, which is a conversation about numbers and the math you do in your head. Except, I'm going to be doing all the talking. Normally, we try to get the kids do, to do all the talking. Let's get rid of the box first. Now, hopefully, the fear is out of the way, and we can get back to our first question. What's wrong with regular addition and subtraction? There's nothing wrong with it. We still teach it. It's the goal of everything through second grade to get to it. We don't call it carry over and borrowing anymore. We call it vertical method because that's how you write it and read it as opposed to an equation. Here's an example. 12 minus 7 equals something. That's the equation, and here's the vertical version of it, which is just this. And it's vertical because we read it up and down. And uh, maybe if you don't know 12 minus 7 in your head, maybe you don't. But uh, you write it vertically, and you look at this, and you're like, oh, well, I can just do it this way. And then, uh, oh, yeah, I have to uh, do that. And then I have 12 minus 7 again. Oh, I'm stuck. And this is really what brings me to question two, is that at some point, you're going to have to do some mental math. Now, if you've got some, if you can hold up 12 fingers and take down seven, good on you. And I hate to see what you're going to have to do for 18 minus nine. That one's going to be really tough. I can only do 10. Here's the second question. And the answer is, the weird stuff is all mental math. If you're like me, no one really taught you how to do the math in your head. The weird stuff is all ways we use to teach it to kids and the ways we have to explain their, they have to explain their mental math on paper. It looks so weird because mental math doesn't translate to paper very well, just as pencil and paper math, like this. This doesn't translate uh, very well mentally. It's very difficult to do mentally by the same process. I know some of you do this mentally. Imaging, um, you know, imagining all those digits like they're in some kind of image hanging in the air. It's very difficult to keep it visually all together while you do all of these conditional steps and it's really a, a very kind of a difficult way to do that particular problem. Um, here's a mental method that we use called the arrow way that shows how to do that same problem mentally. Now looking at this mentally, I'm thinking 99. That's only one short of 100. So if I was counting up the difference, that's just plus one. That gets me to the 100. And then I'm thinking, well, that's only 2 more to 102 plus 2. So how much do I have to add the difference between 99 and 102? It's 
is 3. So then I just finish up by writing 102 minus 99 equals 3. Much easier to do this mentally. It, it's a bit of a pain to write out the mental process, but it's mental math. And it, even writing that out is a lot easier than going through all those steps and making sure you get them right. When there's a zero in the tens place, it, it's always more difficult to do. Now this brings me to the third question and the story I promised. I'm going to erase all of this and get to that next. Can't there be just one way to add and subtract? I assume this means carrying over or borrowing. And I sort of just answered that. It's great when you have pencil and paper. But a lot of the math we do, we don't have pencil and paper. We can do it in our heads. Uh, we do have a lot of different ways to do the math because depending on what the numbers are, you do it differently. Here's my story, uh, which is also my example. Uh, when I buy pickles, I always have to buy at least two jars. There they are. Uh, because my son will eat a whole jar of them all at once, and I have to hide one, uh, one of the jars for myself, just so I can have pickles. Suppose they're on sale, and the price is $1.99, which would be a great price. And for two of them, $1.99 plus $1.99. You can solve this mentally much faster than you can take out your phone and turn on your calculator app and enter in the numbers. Uh, you just look at this and say, well, $1.99, that's almost $2. So can I just round that up and call it 2 plus 2 instead? Sure you can. It's about $4. If I wanted to make it exact, I could think, well, I, what did I have to do? I had to round it up a penny for each one. So that's two pennies, two cents, and I could say what's two cents less than four dollars is three dollars and ninety-eight cents. And if I had to write this out the arrow way, it's going to look like this. Four dollars minus a penny is three ninety-nine, and then minus another penny oops one more penny is 398 and again it's like the way I said it doing it in your head is a lot faster and easier but when you have to write it down your mental math that's when it looks really weird and goofy now suppose that those jars aren't uh, they're not on sale and they cost two dollars and fifty cents each 250 plus 250. Now, do this mentally. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to use that same strategy of rounding up to the nearest whole dollar and adding because they're not really that close to a nearest whole dollar. They're right in the middle. But I do see something else I can use. I'm looking at this 50 cents here and that 50 cents there, and that's easy to say 50 cents and 50 cents, that's a dollar. So I just have. One, two, three, four, and this is another one for five bucks. And that's the mental process. Well, I could write this all out the arrow way in the different steps, but I'm not going to do that right now. I think I've made that point. But this is the point that I am trying to make, is that depending on what the numbers are, you're going to use a different kind of strategy. That is why we teach different ways to do the mental math. A lot of teachers will disagree with me on this and say there are different ways so that different kids can find a method they like and then stick to that one. I hope I've convinced you that isn't exactly true. You're welcome to leave a comment on this video and subscribe to my channel. Most of the videos are homework walkthroughs, but I will be posting more introduction on uh, and producing more videos on the different models we use to teach mental math and explain mental math on paper. Uh, thanks for watching.